Hi, I'm Mrs Howard and I'm here to tell you about A-level English language at level six. Um, so we need to look at what the course involves. So you do paper one and paper two um, in level five, usually with Mr Downing, and then I take over and do paper three and paper four for the full A-level. And what does it involve then? So for section A, language change, and you can see the bump here, but we look at how language English is continually adapted to reflect changes. Basically, any language that doesn't change is a dead language. So that's what we discuss. And we look at the so social, cultural, political, technology, technological contexts, and we look at the causes and the consequences. Um, so people need to be able to show that they can research in the field of language change. We have to analyse unseen texts. We study a very interesting thing called the n-gram graph. I'm just going to show you this now. It's quite fun. You can put, so let's say we put Blackberry into the n-gram graph. And you can see um, here that the word Blackberry, you can see when it spiked in terms of usage. And it's really interesting that the modern usage around about 1980, up to just about 2000, it became far more used. That's because presumably of the phone that was called a Blackberry. You can also compare two words together. So if we look at thou and you. Um, oops. We do it like this. So we can see that you was always used far more than thou. And it's hardly used at all now. But interesting that there are still one or two people still saying that, but you is far more common. So we look at things like that, just how language has changed over time. We look at theories and concepts. And of course, we have to write essays. And we look at things about um, like the Old English version. Um, Old English is pretty much illegible to most modern English people, uh, modern English speakers. And we can see the, the Lord's prayer, prayer there. It's interesting that. Oh. The second part of the paper um, is child language acquisition. And my really favourite part is it's fascinating that children can acquire language in four years and you can have a really decent conversation. So we look at children from zero to eight years. The exam consists of a set of data that people have to, students have to analyse to look at how children are acquiring language. Um, one little point here is this is a famous example to show that children automatically understand about putting the S ending on for plurals. So they're given this little picture of made a panel called a work, and then they get two of them. And I think over 90% of the children say there are two works. So it shows that they understand the general principle of applying S to plurals. This is young children, obviously. Then paper four is English in the world. And we look at the history of English as a global language because, like it or not, English is becoming the global language. And we look at how this has happened and also the ethics related to it. Is it is it an ethical thing that English has become the global language? Um, so we've got some of the ideas here. And just what we've got here is Cashrew's circles. And this is what his theory, um, he says the inner circle is the UK and the US and that language flows outwards, say to Singapore and India, the expanding circle where English is increasingly being adopted. Um, there we go. So if we have just moved down now to what does the course involve for paper four? This is English and the self, and this is a synoptic unit in that it takes, draws on everything learned further, um, sorry, previously in the course. So it looks at how we, how language allows us to communicate our sense of self, to others. And we, the ways a fascinating idea is that language determines thought and how are they interwoven with and inseparable from each other. I think that should say inseparable. Let's just change that. Um, and how we use language both consciously and unconsciously to create identities. One idea here is that uh, the idea of idiolect and that's the personal way you speak and it is always, always unique. So to finish off, what have we got? We've got some what students say. People can have a look at that and have a look at the PowerPoint. Um, and if we just have a look um, at this one. So join English with an open mind. Don't worry about the technical side because it's surprisingly easy to study. That's rather nice that 
students feel that teachers help them. Um, and I like this. So old English is particularly useful when insulting people and having them left speechless and mind boggled like the foul wench they are. Sweet. <laughs> Another student thought it was going to be a lot harder than it sounded as the topic seemed incredibly complex, but they aren't. It's just a lot of information. Yes, there is a lot of information to process, but there are subtopics which very much apply to day to day life. And I think that's absolutely spot on. That's just that's so what it's about. And obviously people can read the comments and they'll be able to see the PowerPoint. But English language is so useful if you want to go on to a university degree in law, international relations, politics, et cetera, because it's very much about how life, how language works in the real world. It's, it's the science of language, but it's so vital and so interesting and so relevant. Thank you.